Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Good morning, you alls. So this video is going to be a little documentary. So if you want to see a little documentary, then hang in there. This is going to be me preparing to go to and to actually race at a legit race, lumberjack race in... Uh, Jackson, Alabama. Oh, I'm wearing my hat, by the way. This is my buddy Tim out of Iowa Performance Saws. He sent this to me, and uh, I dig it. It's a really high-quality hat. So many hats are just cheap. So anyways, um, yeah, I thought that this race took place the first week, uh, the first weekend of December. I was wrong. It actually takes place uh, the first weekend of November every year. So, <laughs> the saw that I just sent to Cajun that he is building for this race <laughs> is going to be uh, a little dollar, what, what's, what's the phrase? Day too late, dollar short, or something like that. Dollar short, and day too late. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for, there we go, I think that'll do it. A 3 8 eight pin sprocket. I wish I had a 10 pin, but I don't. I don't have one. So, there we go, that'll work. This is my 3120. Now, I am going with my eyes wide open to this race. The gentlemen that, and possibly ladies, I don't know, that are running uh, at this race, this is a this is a real deal race. They're all going to be running. I think it's nitromethane. Um, they're all they they've got their saws set up like. Well, I mean, you know. They're actual race saws, you know? Nobody's taking those out and actually cutting firewood. So, okay, at least I got an eight pin sprocket on there now. So, all of my saws, I, I have this thought process. I, I think that I would really enjoy actually competing in races um and so this is my first real comp i say real sawfest was a real competition it just wasn't full tilt there was really no axe game games and stuff like that i don't know if i'm going to get a chance to chop uh to to, to do the axe stuff because i don't have the right axe i do have an axe that i'm going to use for throwing I made this axe from an old, I think it's a jersey pattern, and I hung it. This is actually red oak from here on my ranch, and uh, I mean, they may have a minimum, a minimum uh, handle length. I don't know. I'm just going to bring this, and if they let me throw it, I'm, this is what I'm going to throw. I've never thrown it before. I've, I have thrown axes a, a little bit. But uh, I don't care if I lose. I know that I'm going to lose. I just want to compete, see how I like it. And if I do, then maybe we can start putting together saws to actually, actually race. Um, on my trip down there, on the way is a little town called Auburn. And... Uh, I believe I have one subscriber. I don't know what your name is. I think it's, but your your subscriber handle is like Auburn Tigers or something, I think. So I will be going, passing through Auburn 
and what there is in Auburn is there is a John Sered 2165 that's for sale it's on Facebook marketplace I don't want to buy another saw but these saws they keep entering my path <laughs> you know and so I'm like well I guess I'll buy them you know because how often do you get the opportunity to purchase a 2165 not very often and this one's priced reasonably I think that it'll be good and uh, we'll give it a shot so if this goes well then maybe this time next year my saws that I'm running will look very different uh, but let's take a look at it right there. That's the 20 uh, the 3120 this will be ringing in the hot saw class and the hot saw saw class That's where they'll have the big expansion chamber pipes and they're cutting so fast They're cutting so fast uh, But you know, I, I don't stand a chance not a chance with any of my stuff But it'll be fun and I'll record it all and I'll let you guys see it and uh We'll see how I do. But let's go take a look at the saws that I'm actually bringing. Ugh. So that's the lineup. The way they do it is they do cubes. Three cube, whoop, three cube. That's uh, the Thunder Kitten, ported by Charlie Briscoe. I'll be running that in this race. Um, it's set up. With the little 15 inch bar that I ran at Sawfest and uh, the 325 chain. I don't think that they'll have it, they'll say anything. You can probably run any chain you want. But, um, anyways, 325 chain, 15 inch bar, Echo 4910. I call it the Thunder Kitten, ported by Charlie Briscoe. For the four cube class, this uh, four cubes is 65 cc's, three cubes is 50 cc's. So 65 cc's, Poland 425. It is 100% stock, but I don't have anything else that will fall into that category that is faster than it is. However, if I pick up, if I pick up the 365, I'm sorry, the, the 2165 John Sered before I get there, I might run it instead of this. The 2165 will probably be very even with this. Very close. But I don't know. Anyways, I think it'll be cool to run a Poland. I'll probably run the Poland. For the um, five cube class, five, five cube class, that is where my 21, I'm sorry, my 281 XP is supposed to fit in because five cubic inches is like, I think it's uh, 84 cc's right there at it but I don't have that I sent it to Pat to Cajun to get to get uh, ported so the fastest thing that I have that'll run in that category even close to it here is my Shindala 757 so I will be running it Hellboy and then for the six cube class six cube goes up to a hundred cc's um, and the fastest thing that I have for that category is my 592 XP, so I'll be running it. And then the hot saw class, 3120 XP. So that's all the saws that I will be running, and uh, you saw the ax already that I'll be throwing. Maybe there'll be somebody there that will allow me to borrow their ax for me to do the chopping stuff because I'm not going to chop with a regular axe. I'll be out there all day. It's just not even going to happen. But I may not be allowed to because they may expect you to have the um, chain mail. It, you basically have chain mail socks. But I did bring a pair of steel toed boots in case they go, you can run up, you can do it with steel toed boots. I don't know what to expect. But I'm going to finish loading this up, get a, a just a handful of tools. I've already got my chaps loaded up. I gotta get the earbuffs and stuff like that. 
But um, yeah, I'm gonna finish loading up and then I'll hit the road. So I am here in Auburn, Alabama. Lovely, lovely lady uh, just sold the chainsaw. She lost her husband. Um, uh, nice neighborhood, but it's idealistic. Um, this uh, saw belonged to an older gentleman who who has passed, but um, it's it's pristine. And so I'm, I'm guessing this is the original bar, which you know you can really tell how much something has been used by looking at that bar. It's a 20 inch husky bar on there. Well, actually, it can't be the original bar because it's husky. Oh, so maybe this has a little bit more use than I was thinking. But either way, it is the 2165s. You see it uh, right there, 65 cc's. So this is going to be the non X torque, the non X torque absolute hands down leader for the four cube class. Uh, for the four cube class, as far as I know, as far as I know, if you're going to build a four cube brace saw, this one is the one that nothing beats it really. Um, now, I'll probably still run my Poland because as they are, both of them being completely stock, they're probably both extremely similar. I don't know, I'll take the advice of the guys there whenever I get there. Maybe I'll run this, maybe I'll run the Poland. Probably run the Poland just because it's different. Um, but I'm very happy about it. So now if I want to build an actual four cube brace saw, I have the platform right here. So, uh, super excited. I got it for 250. Um, a very, very nice, very lovely deal. I'm, I am happy. I'm going to take that bar off of there so that I can store it more easily in the truck. And we're off to the races, literally. Gas station in Alabama. That is one Snickers bar. <laughs> it's not a whole bunch of little ones. It is one. So one pound Snickers. Alabama, roll time. <laughs> and so I know it's Circle K, gas station food, but this is for hot box, pizza truck, and Cajun. Boudin bites. <laughs> so I, I think this is my first time having Boudin and it's from a gas station so I don't have high expectations. It's like dirty rice. Right? Right? It's like dirty rice and this one here is deep fried. They make little balls out of it. So, <laughs> so yeah. There you go. Hey guys, I'm here in Jackson, Alabama getting ready to compete. I guess you would call this like one of the legit um, lumberjack competitions. Like that's on the circuit. I don't know. But uh, anyways, it's we're still getting set up over there. It's about time to register. There's Grant. Say hey, Grant. Hello. Hey, there's Cole back there. Cole's running. He's from Michigan. Uh, right there. So, probably recognize that guy. But, uh, yeah, all the competitors are getting set up. And, uh, I'm going to capture my own footage. I'm not here to record this event. Maybe they'll have somebody, but I'll definitely try and get my footage of my runs. I'm just running, you know, just gas saws. We'll lose every event and that's fine, but it's gonna be fun. All right, later. first big struggle. Um, it's a good thing I picked up that 2165 because my four cube saw, which was gonna be the Poland 425, having recoil issues. So we'll swap this bar over to the 2165 and I haven't even tried to start that saw yet. So <laughs> we gotta make sure it runs. Second failure, the very first throw. I just did a practice throw and bam. Yeah, you know, I brought this thing just because I made it. It's a wall hanger, it looks cool. My old Viking axe, but uh, that's red oak on the handle. 
Okay. Red Oak is shit wood. <laughs> First throw. It's getting close. And I am nervous. I am. Ken did good. Didn't you? What was your top, what was your score? Eleven. So that was on, out of a possible fifteen on the axe throw. But we just saw Grant do fifteen. Yep. He had three bullseyes. That was slick, wasn't it? Yeah. Methanol, so you will know them when we get to them. So let's get to the three cubic inch. Here's how we're gonna do it. On the yellow, on the yellow, yellow will be uh, Bodie Pennington, and the blue Matthew Jones. Y'all will be first on deck. Trevor Seville on yellow, Grant Farman on uh, blue. On the bubble, Brian Wamsley and Coon Hanson. Uh, uh, and then Cole and Jody, Jason and Wayne and Ken and Joe. That's the way we're going to do it. Yellow and blue. This is a timed event, and uh, we, we have one of them. Sure enough, state-of-the-art Tim, steel timber sport timing machines is going to do this. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Check out Bodie's YouTube channel. It's Novice Lumberjack. Go to YouTube and I wish we'd have filmed. 
Oh, Yo, you did film it. You did film it. It'll be on YouTube. All right, Kevin and Brent, y'all out there. Oh, that sucked. I thought I had it tuned right, but that's the problem whenever you can't put it in the wood before you start. You know, I'm running way too lean. I thought it was good. God, that sucks. That was embarrassing, but worse things have happened. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Come on, Kenny! He's sitting up busted wide open with the crowd's help. Y'all don't think that's work. That is work right there. Reach out in the guts again. Here we go. He's sitting up bust. I saw it crack. I saw it crack. Oh. One more leg. Hey! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, y'all, let's help him out. Everybody, Mike. 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 Mike
some more. We got some more chopping and sawing to do, though. But right now, we are on our fourth cubic inch with Jody Hutton and Bodie Pennington. All right, warm them up. Timber. I think I should be running a seven tooth on this, or seven pin sprocket. Eight's a little bit much whenever you're trying to push it through the wood like that. That softwood, it cuts faster, but it also, whenever you push on it, well, it's soft and mushy, so. Thank you. 
That auto tune really needs to be in the wood and get set, but it's all right. And I flubbed my start. Okay, so it's Sunday. The race was yesterday. Um, I left for the race on Friday. So it's been a full weekend. Um, it's a darn good thing I picked up that John's Red 2165 now, isn't it? <laughs> or I wouldn't have been able to race in that class at all. So I'm here to discuss what the experience was like and and uh and what i what i've learned so um it was a great time it, it, it i really enjoyed it uh and again i've if you watch the channel you'll know that i've been a really big i don't know champion for the idea that the people that i've met in this hobby have been overwhelmingly um, open and caring and intelligent. Um, that's, that's not a big one for me to give out either. I feel like the world's full of idiots and I have a hard time swimming in that ocean. You know, I feel like I'm getting drowned by the idiots. And I never in my life I know it's kind of a smack, but you know, and never in my life would I have imagined that I would have found just an awesome, caring, open, sharing, intelligent crowd of people in the chainsaw community of all communities. I just wasn't expecting that, guys. Sorry. That's called brutal honesty. You know, I figured people in the chainsaw industry was going to be just backwards and and not be able to, you know, figure stuff out. And I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot that they're out there. They're out there. But um, everybody that I've met has been top notch. Seriously. Um, few people, you know, everybody's got their little pricks. Sure. But uh, for the most part, stay away from them. They stay away from you. So let's uh, get on to what I learned. All right, so everybody's running, um, pretty much, everybody's running their fuel, they just call it alcohol, um, and it's various different mixtures of things, and I have a lot to learn about that. So what I have learned is I've got a lot to learn about the fuels, but the basics that I can give you are there's some sort of website called Red Max, and I know I, the first thing I said was, I, I'm like, I'm thinking of the Red Max chainsaws. No. The guy, Cole, was telling me about it, and he's like, <laughs> he got a real lazy, no, son. I'm telling you, that's not the Red Max. <laughs> and, uh, but then basically, they, they order it online. He did give me the name of it. Um, but the, that'll show up in future videos. I don't know enough about it. Whenever I get that figured out, I will share all of that with you. But there is a specific name of the website, like A and E Fuels or some crap like that. And you order a quart, of, quart at a time. And um, I, I asked him, I was like, what is it, like 50 bucks a quart? And he's like, no, it ain't that expensive. So that's all I got. And uh, you order the, the ratios based on what you want and stuff. Do you want 20% alcohol? Do you want 80%, you know, and they mix it for you. <clears throat> so the other thing that I learned about that, some of the folks, not all of them, I mean, 
not all of them by a long shot. They would go out there and they would run their saw and then they would pretty much immediately come back. We're talking within five minutes. They would come back. They would drain out all of their race fuel back into the race fuel container, right? And then they would add regular two-stroke fuel like we run in our regular firewood saws, you know? 40 to 1, 50 to 1, whatever that, that individual runs. They'd fire the saws back up in order to flush out the alcohol fuel and have just good regular non-ethanol, you know, so that I guess it doesn't eat up your, your rubber seals and things like that. They call it a flush uh, or uh, a rinse or wash of the racing fuel, get it out of the system so that it's not sitting there in the system. Another thing, sprockets. Sprockets. Um, I cannot speak for everyone, uh, but I know uh, that uh, most of us, whenever we think of a racing saw and stuff, we're, we're thinking along the lines of throwing a 10-pin sprocket on there. What I saw, that was not the case. Uh, there was some vague referencing, and you know, one guy was running a 7-pin sprocket on his 3120 hot saw. So. Uh, the idea that you're producing so much power that you're going to get more and more, um, more and more speed out of your chain by going to this great big huge sprocket. From what I saw, people, I mean, I didn't see much. So this is a lot of just speculation, okay? But, and overhearing conversations and things, and it's just like sprockets, it was not a natural thing for people to run this huge sprocket like I was expecting it to be, okay? So people were probably running seven and eight pins and that's it, you know? I'm guessing, I'm just guessing on that. So I do know one thing for sure. <clears throat> um, I'm switching from an eight pin back to a seven pin on my Shindawa because I think that the eight pin is literally slowing it down. So, there you go. Porting. Um, this is a really, really awesome thing. And so, somewhere between Atlanta and the race, I came across a bridge and I saw these three billy goats screwing around with this troll. The troll was saying, go back to your farm. The farmer's going to miss you. And the billy goats were like, let us cross the bridge. Well, anyways, I saw what the troll was trying to do. And I grabbed those billy goats and I drug them back to the farm. As a token of gratitude, that little troll dropped some knowledge on me, but swore me to secrecy. I was not allowed to tell who that troll was or where the bridge that he was protecting uh, exists. So that's why that story is there. <laughs> uh, and if you don't know about the Three Billy Goats Gruff story, look it up. Three Billy Goats Gruff and there was a troll that lived under a bridge. One of my favorite little child, childhood stories, you know, I liked it. But I was given two race cylinders. Um, and so this allows me this wonderful little peek inside of that universe. It's, it's, it's wild. Uh, and then uh, lastly, I, I'll sum it up with this. So chains. Um, chains are critical to a level that uh, most of us can't even imagine. You know, um, imagine being able to take the fastest chain you've ever ran, you know, round file, you know, fastest chain you've ever ran and just swap a different chain on there and actually be able to cut 
25% faster, 30% faster, uh, just by a, a, a chain swap. So what I learned in just quick, you know, screwing on my phone and looking at my personal times, um, the gentleman that took the uh, four cube class, he ran that in just a little over six seconds, I believe. I think it was like 6.42 seconds, I think. Well, my time was right at 12 seconds, maybe a little bit over 12 seconds. So he literally cut uh, my time in half, which is, that's big. That's a big deal, you know? That's, that, he went twice as fast as me. Um, and so the, the way I'm looking at it is I'm, I'm going, his being twice as fast as me uh, was probably 60% power, 40% chain, something like that. Maybe 70% power, 30% chain. Uh, so the chain is massively important because I know that the power that that saw is putting out compared to mine is probably double power, probably double. Um, or maybe more, I don't know. But the one thing that thrilled me to learn was how long those chains last. So the only time that you're running one of those chains is at the actual race. You do not practice with that chain. You don't pull it out and showcase it to a buddy. Um, that chain only runs in the event, which is always going to be clean, you know, barkless, there's no bark on there, good, clean, no knots either, soft wood. So, with that in mind, your chain should last a long time, but the troll told me that his chain, now he has multiple chains, but one specific, there was a story behind it, and it's what got him into racing. And that is his chain that he originally started with, he's had for over 20 years, um, and he sharpened it three times. And he said he still runs that chain. Um, now, like I said, he has multiple chains, so it's not like he's switching it between every single saw. But yeah, they'll last a long time, which is good because they're expensive as hell. And I did find an individual that will make me a chain. Um, at least one, you know, maybe a couple. Uh, but uh, we'll see. And I don't know if I'm, I should give his name or not. But um, uh, yeah, I look forward to that. And I saw the stuff he was running. And junk was fast. He had some of the fastest saws there. And so I know the chain is going to be up to par as well. But yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the documentation of this experience. Was not able or trying to get everyone. Um, I will say the craziest. Oh, Joe. The guy running the uh, John Sered 630, he did say something really awesome to me. And he said, uh, just remember this, you will beat the best in the world and you will lose to the worst. <laughs> you know, so it's just uh, so many things can go wrong whenever, whenever a tenth of a second is a long time, you know. So a lot can go wrong in a tenth of a second whenever these guys are running so close to each other. Yeah, uh, one little slip, like I, you know, several of mine, you know, I, I make the slightest slip of the uh, grabbing the, the recoil starter, you know, and you, you lose two tenths of a second right there. Uh, that, that's, that's a lot. So, oh, another thing too, I gotta bring this up. I was so embarrassed by my Thunder Kitten run 
my three cube 50 cc race saw the very first one very first i'm the very first person up there right and if i was ever going to win a single race it would have been that one because the guy i was going against couldn't get his to start so i was like ah oh! <laughs> i got my feelings hurt so bad on that one and so I also learned one more thing that to me is pretty critical and that is if at all possible I'm gonna show up with my own chunk of wood so that I can put my saws in that chunk of wood before I race them and get the tune dialed in because I'm doing the regular you know tuning it in the air and the Thunder Kitten for whatever reason has always been very difficult for me to tune because it doesn't matter how much you lean it out, it still wants to four stroke. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why that is. Um, I guess maybe that carburetor, yeah, this would make sense. Maybe that carburetor is like the Echo 590 carburetor in that it's always going to meter in a small amount of fuel. I don't know. I don't know. But that thing was still four stroking and I went up there and I cut with it and it was so dang lean, it was barely able to cut. I was, I was thinking about stopping uh, because I was so embarrassed. Um, everything, that, that was just embarrassing, it was humiliating. And that's why I was so excited with my four cube run, I bring out the Johnson Red and I had a nice good clean run and you saw me, yeah, I was very excited about that and happy. Um, so yeah. I really feel bad for Charles. So, I mean, that's the first real event that his, that the Thunder Kitten, that was ported by Charles Briscoe. And I feel like I let Charles down because I didn't have it tuned right. I mean, that saw, in no way would it have won a race on regular terms. But there, the man, he finished in 17 seconds. Could I have beat him because he couldn't get his started. He had to pull on it several times, I guess, you know? He couldn't get his stuff started. I stood a chance of possibly winning that one if I had had the Thunder Kitten ported properly. And I didn't. And man, that was embarrassing. But you live and you learn. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to more con content from me. If you haven't already done it, what are you waiting for? Like and subscribe. See ya.